Today, the subject is, I will take what is left. Shall we pray? There is something you want to say to us, Lord. Please say it. And help us to listen and obey. In Jesus' name, amen. The book of Matthew, the 13th chapter. There are several great parables in the Bible. And all of these parables speak great truths. One immediately thinks of the prodigal son, for instance. Some consider it to be the master parable, the Good Samaritan, probably co-equal with the prodigal son as a powerful parable where truth is painted in pictures. Is the parable of the talents and the parable of the ten virgins and these Lucan and Matthew parables seem to reach out and to bespeak great powerful truth. There is perhaps a fifth parable though that does not get quite as much attention but is still a classic in its content, in its power, in its meaning. It's the parable of the sower. And I am extremely impressed with the way Jesus, the master unfolder of truth, opens our hearts and minds to this parable of the sower. Listen to the opening verses. Matthew 13, verse 1, that, that same day, when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, uh, get the scene, he is near Capernaum, uh, he is on the shores of the Galilean Sea, uh, there, is the, there is the sun shining down and, 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 and there is the blue azure of the sky re, re, reflected in the very sea itself and, and there are thousands of people standing around waiting to hear the words of Jesus. And the Bible says great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Now Jesus begins to speak in verse 4. Matthew 13, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, listen, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came up and devoured them up. Verse 5, some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, and, be, and because they had no deepness of earth, and, and when the sun was up, they were scorched, and, and, became, and, and because they had no root, they withered away. Verse 7, Matthew 13, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up, and, and choked them, choked them. But other fell into good soil, good ground, and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. And then... This cryptic statement, who hath ears to hear, let him do what, church? And one immediately gets the idea that Jesus is about to say something absolutely important. He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the church is saying, what the Spirit is saying, what the Bible is saying. There are these soils. Uh, there is this soil that, 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 that is pictured in, in chapter 13, this, this first soil, this, this, this hard soil, this wayside soil. If you have visited Palestine and you've seen their fields, 
you know that in between where the sowing takes place, there are these pathways, these hardened pathways where people have walked and, and walked and, and the ground is not broken there, it is not plowed there, or maybe it once was broken and once was plowed, but as it is walked across, it gets firm and, and hard and unresponsive and unyielding to the sea. We know from reading the rest of the chapter that these various soils represent the condition of human beings. We are being talked about here. And as Jesus preached, he looked out in that audience and he saw wayside soil and he saw stony soil and he saw thorny soil and he saw some good soil and he's trying to reach them and help them understand that there's a condition you're in today that may need God's attention The sower is that the the sower is obviously Jesus Christ who 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 left who left the heavenly farmhouse and and went out to where we are and and got wet as the farmer gets wet in the rain and and got bleached by the sun as the farmer sometimes does and rose early to minister as the farmer must ro rise early to work. Jesus is pictured as the sower who reaches down into his basket of goodness and tosses the seed every time the preacher preaches. The seed is being tossed wherever. Wherever it may fall, some stony ground, some wayside ground, some good ground, some thorny ground, but he just keeps on tossing. And every time a text is read and every time a point is made and every time a, a verb is issued and every time the Spirit crawls in my mouth and says something you need to hear, Jesus, not Henry Wright, Jesus is tossing the seed. He is not particular. Everybody gets a chance. The seed goes out everywhere. You ought to be thankful this morning that Jesus is not choosy. He at least gives you a chance. But some are wayside. Some have been walked on. Some have gotten cold and hard, some have gotten firm, some have gotten unresponsive, some have been disappointed, some have been disillusioned, some had had great hopes when they first joined the church and things didn't work out, some have had experiences in life that have made them afraid, untrusting, uh, uncaring, indifferent. They have built a wall of firmness around themselves and when the word goes out, it's hard for it to sink in them. Some of us are too cool to be saved. Don't want to get caught up in Jesus. Don't want to be responsive. Uh, uh, don't want our heads filled with religious things. We, we, we're afraid. Uh, you know, it, it would be amazing to me to discover what would happen to the church if, if more of us really, 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 really got caught up in Jesus. The church would be on fire. Somebody say amen out there. The church would be full of energy and interest and quest and power because we have allowed that, 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 that framework around us, that posture around us. Come in church on, on Sabbath morning and we've got on our nicest suit and our best tie and our white shirt and our best dress and that sweet hat and those nice shoes and those good stockings and those and those all those things that 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 are that are outside exterior which cover up our real needs uh, and we hope we can get to the day and nobody look beyond those clothes and see the real me the only problem with that is this you can fool most of the people most of the time and some of the people part of the time but you can't fool Jesus no time he looks beyond that 
Hart Schaffner and Mark Sue. He looks beyond those, those, those Hickey Freeman shoes. I don't know what you wear over here. I'm talking my own brands. He looks beyond those, those fancy shirts and he sees down inside that this person sitting in church today, posturing himself to death, needs to forget about how he looks and when the time comes, cry out, Lord, save me. Wayside soil. Just laying there, cool, seed, drops on top. Not going to say amen. Seed drops on top, not going to change. Seed drops on top. I've been disappointed before. Too many hypocrites in the church. You know, I am so sorry that some of us have forgotten why we come to church. And I have this feeling that a whole lot of Christian people have made the mistake of believing that the reason for coming to church is to watch other people. And the reason why I know that is because by the time we get to the supper table, when church is over, all we talk about is the people. Did you see her? Did you see him? Uh, the nerve, the nerve of her walking across the rostrum with that dress on. Look, my friend, <laughs> why did you come? My wife has always teased me and admired me at the same time because when I come to church, she says, Honey, you amaze me. It doesn't make any difference how the preacher preaches. It doesn't make any difference whether he reads, whether he stands there like a stone wall, or whether he waves his arms, or whether his sermon is half-baked, or whether his sermon is good. You seem to get something out of it. That's because I go to get something out of it. I don't care how you look. I don't care what you wear. I'm not concerned. You can't save me. I'm coming to make contact with Jesus Christ, my Savior. Wayside soil. And so the birds of distraction, the birds, of, why did she have that hat on? The birds. Why did she hit that note like that? The birds of distraction. And while you're sitting in church, listen! While you're sitting in church, before the word even takes root, it's gone. Satan tricked quickly turns your mind and that's why when appeals come uh, Satan lets babies cry when appeals come he lets somebody get up and walk out in that moment when appeals come he lets some book drop because he knows some of us are ways to shake if you grab a hold of God and say not gonna let you go this Sabbath till I get my blessing somebody talk to me out there wayside soil some fell upon stony places now, at first reading, you get the opinion that the stones are laying all out there on the ground. So that it's obvious that it is stony soil. That ain't what I read in my Bible. In fact, it says that the seed springs up quickly, which suggests to me that the stony soil is in the hearts of people who are very responsive. You see, there are lots of people, I enjoy this sermon, there are lots of people who come to church and they're very quick to say amen, to say thank you, Jesus, to say man, man, what a blessing, very responsive. Appeals make, they come down every appeal. They spring up quick, but they don't have any staying power. Come on, somebody say amen out there. Love church, wouldn't miss it. Prayer meeting, first one at the door. Love it all, but it doesn't last when they get down in the crucible of London and the, and the test tube of life and the hard times of experiences. They somehow quickly forget all those things they said amen about. Christianity is staying by. It's sticking it through. I admired my mom and dad for mom passed after my second trip over here. 
just before my second trip over here. 87. Brought my dad with me, in fact, and my wife to NBC. Mom and dad had been married for 48 years. It was amazing to watch them. I'm talking about staying power. And you could see them, you know, they were cute, you know, they'd get on each other's nerves, stuff. Sometimes I'd see mom, a little short, five foot two, little Jamaican lady, you know, talk real fast, you know, like a... <laughs> mom could get out 55,000 words while you were working up the first word. And my dad is a phlegmatic, cool, calm, elected. You know, my dad's one of these guys, you know, he gets up. You know, if, 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 if an atom bomb fell over across the road from dad, he'd get up. Well, pretty big bomb out there. <laughs> Almost opposites they were. And it just amazed me how they would get along, how their personalities work with one another. But one thing I learned from them is that when you make, listen to me, when you make a commitment, you got to be committed not just to one another, but committed to the commitment. Uh-oh, somebody's not listening. you got to be committed to the commitment. And what we need in the church is people who are committed to the church, come what may. I'm tired of these up and down in and out, sometimes happy, most times sad, Christians who, who, who seem to respond back and forth with every mood that takes place. It's time to make up our minds. I have decided I will stand though the heavens fall. I will not be moved. So I don't care what I hear about the preacher. I don't care what I hear about the deacon. I don't care what I hear about this person or that person. I don't care what I hear about the leaders of the church. I've made up my mind. I'm going to stay with the church. Are you listening to me out there? Young people, it's time for us to become committed to something else besides ourselves and our pleasures and committed to Christ and his church. Deeply committed. And one time my mom and dad got into an argument and they kind of forgot we were there and our, our faces got kind of wide, you know, eyes big. And mom was hot, man, went in the room, boom, slammed the door. I remember I was a little guy, I looked at my brother and said, this is it. <laughs> this is it. Five minutes later, mom came out, she was laughing, just laughing, dad fed out laughing. We stand their eyes as big as they should be. <laughs> Craziest folk we've ever seen in our life. Committed to one another. Are you listening to me? Sometimes there will be hard times in the church. Sometimes you'll find, in fact, I'm going to tell you very frankly, I hate to discourage you, but some of the oddest people I know belong to the church. So when you join the church, you sometimes will be in the church with a bunch of oddballs and, 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 and bizarre people and, and people with some strange ideas. But that's, that's all right. You might as well get used to them here. You're going to heaven with them. So just hang in there. They're the strange people in the church and they have our ideas. But you're committed. And this stony soil lacked commitment. No deep roots, no room. Listen, no room for deep roots because stones were there. Grandpa used to uh, have his farm and we'd follow him behind him when he was plowing. Sometimes the plow would, would dig up rocks just beneath the surface. Listen carefully now. You couldn't see them on top, just beneath the surface. And Grandpa would stop and pull those rocks and stones loose. And as he pulled them out, they would leave holes. Listen, listen. And then he would have to fill in the holes with dirt. You see, folk, you got to do more than clean out your life from sin. You got to fill it in with righteousness. 
You got to do more than give up smoking. You got to fill that time you spent smoking doing something else. What do you say? You got to do more than give up your girlfriend, brother. You got to spend more time with your wife. You got to fill in the gap left by sin. You got to not only dig out the rocks, you got to fill in the time. Some of us need to spend more time praying, more time studying, more time. We need to fill in the hole. Left by the rocks. Stony ground. Sun came up. The sun always comes up. Second Timothy three twelve. All they that live godly shall not might. Not maybe shall suffer persecution. The sun will come up. Some fell among thorns. I'm interested in this thorny soil. Strong soil. Got enough strength to grow seeds and weeds. See, this is the fella who's trying to make it both with his wife and his girlfriend. Boy, it's quiet out there. Seeds and weeds. Uh, this is the young man who comes to the church social, drinks up all the juice and vegilinks, but still goes to the worldly parties and does that too. You listening to me? Seeds and weeds. Uh, this is the person who can pray mighty powerful prayers but with the same mouth can tell mighty big lies seeds and weeds uh, this is the person who, who can give his tithe on one side and then take money out of that same wallet and buy something he has no business on the other side seeds and weeds double life this soil is doing more harm to the church than any other. There are people who have no idea what the Seventh-day Adventist Church believes because of us. Not because of what we say, but Pastor Chisholm, they see us do one thing on Sabbath and do another thing on Monday. They see us in church on Sabbath, meet them at the pub on Tuesday. They cannot figure out who we are what we believe, what we stand for, what's important, because we're doing both things equally. Sing hymns, but know the latest rock song just as well. Seeds and weeds, growing them equally together. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Dealing with seeds and weeds. I had a had a nice garden, flower garden, around my house in Huntsville, Alabama. We just moved down, putting in fresh plants and things. Things going quite well. Decided to go out where some of the young plants were growing and do some weeding. Got to be careful with seeds and weeds. And, and, and Herb was, my second boy was still a little guy. He's tagging along behind me. Daddy? Yeah, boy. Want to pull weeds? Mikey wants to pull weeds. So, all right, Mikey. You help Daddy pull weeds? Yep, yep. Pull weeds. So I gave him a little plot. Right here. I said, now, this is a weed. This be the flowers boy. Pull this, leave this. Mikey got it. Mikey got it. Daddy's going around here. Going to work. When you get done, you come and tell, get Daddy. Okay, okay. Went on around the back just to work it, just to work it. 
Little finger tapped me on the back. Mikey's done. Done? Mikey's done. How's it look? It's all clean. <laughs> Cold chills start working its way down my back. And would you say, son? All clean. All clean. And he takes my hand. You want to look at Take your hand, lead me around. Look. <laughs> look, Daddy. All clean. It was clean as a whistle. No seeds, no weeds. Now listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. There are people who are having difficult times in the church overcoming sin. Are you following me? We have to be patient with folk. Uh, 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 you know, you, you, can, you can get so hard on the weak person in the church, on the weak sinner, that, 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 that you drive them out before they have a chance to find courage. And even as you deal with seeds and weeds in your own life, God understands, yes, he wants us to overcome sin, but, but, but we, 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 we've got to let people grow. Some of us are too demanding. Somebody joins the church on Sabbath, we want them to be a perfect Adventist on Sunday. You ain't none. How come you didn't say amen? Yeah, you're not one. We want them to observe everything Ellen White wrote. You, <laughs> you don't know everything she wrote yourself. Give up this and give up that and give up the other. And they may, they may show up next Sabbath with still some things on that you don't believe in. Just, just give them time. My Lord, give them time. You know, we got to run around behind them. You know, you know, you know the Bible says, uh, Sister White says, ease up, brother. Get your mind on your own soul salvation and pray for this other person. Let them grow. They'll, they'll clean it up. Just gave up unclean meat. You want them to give up pickles and mustard and ketchup? Ease up. <laughs> Somebody say amen out there. Let them grow. Let the weeds and the seeds, you take your time. God will do it. He brought them in. He'll save them. He may have to save them from you. <laughs> you got to watch the seeds and the weeds. But my heart goes out to that Christian today sitting in this congregation who's trying to grow two crops. God help you. God help you. God have mercy upon you. Draining yourself. Playing with the world and playing with the church at the same time. God help you. Tired and weary and guilty and, and sometimes uncomfortable in church because you know things aren't right and you're still trying to support those weeds and the seed needs to grow. Jesus makes a very passionate proclamation he says Henry if you don't deal with those thorns they're going to choke out the seed and that's why sometimes after years of service and years of faithfulness and years in God's house you will suddenly hear about someone that you looked up to, that you thought was so faithful, and the word gets out, so-and-so and so is the king. What? Her? Him? It wasn't sudden. Maybe you just found out, but it wasn't sudden. Maybe the thorns finally revealed themselves. They've been growing a long time. God help you, my friend. My heart goes out to you, sitting there today, knowing that if we knew Jesus appeals to you today is, you've got to pull those weeds. You can't continue to divide your spiritual strength trying to maintain sin and maintain righteousness at the same time. You cannot do it, Henry. You simply cannot. Some fell amongst good ground. Well, I'm encouraged now. Whew. Wayside soil. That wasn't very encouraging. That stony stuff. That gave me a headache. 
and this thorny stuff, that's wearing the church out. Let's get to the good soil. Hmm. When Jesus gets to this part of his sermon, he immediately confronts me, choir, with a dilemma. Notice the words. Just look on as I read and explain to you my dilemma. Oh, my subject is, I'll take what's left. Yeah, that's my subject. But other fell onto good ground. and brought forth fruit. Well, I'm doing all right so far. But this last part of the passage consternates me, Pastor Hector, because it says, some, Jenny brought forth a hundredfold. Some, sixtyfold. And that, as if that's not bad enough, some, thirtyfold. And immediately, my rational, formerly scientific mind, because I never wanted to be a preacher, wanted to be a scientist, is consternated. Because I'm saying, shouldn't all good soil bring forth a hundredfold? Now, I know what you're saying. You say, oh, the poor preacher, he just he doesn't think too good. He doesn't understand that it means that some have more talents than others. Ain't the interpretation of that text. Oh, yes, certainly there are differences between people. But this is talking about life quality. This is talking about Christian quality. This is talking about good soil. How come all the good soil? Let me calm down. How come all the good soil <laughs> isn't producing 100 fold? I am disturbed. Then I had to read further. And something began to turn on in my head. This good soil. Some 100. And by the way, there's only one human being that ever was a hundredfold. Jesus. Well, what about this other soil? Well, as I read further, I begin to understand that the good soil talked about at the end of the parable, it's the wayside soil broken up. It is the stony soil cleaned up. It is the thorny soil weeded out. But in the process, listen, listen, in the process of being wayside, and while it was stony, and being indulged as thorny, it lost some of its power. And by the time, are you listening? By the time it gave itself to Jesus, the original power and strength and vitality, used up by cigarettes, sucked away by tobacco, burned away by alcohol, drenched and used and soaked and, 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 and drained by adultery. While the soil was being wayside and being stony and being thorny, it lost its original power. But Jesus says, I'll take what's left. Jesus says, even though sin has done a job on the human race, I'll take what's left. I'll take them blind. I'll take them deaf. I'll take them crippled. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody ought to say amen. I'll take what's left. Sin does a job on us. And one of the great tragedies for some of us is that we don't recognize that while we are sinning, we're losing something we'll never get back. Using up your vital life force, using up your will, using up, in some cases, your physical strength. But Jesus says, makes no matter, I'll still call you good. I don't see how you can be so calm. 
This is wonderful to me. Do you recognize that unless Jesus was willing to take what's left, nobody would be saved? He's saying to you today that you can bring your leftovers. I'd rather have all of you, but if you've been dumb and been foolish and wasted yourself, bring what you got left, Henry. Bring, if it's only tenfold, bring it. I'll call it good. Bless it. Add my grace to it. And that's why grace is the most wonderful thing in the world. Because Jesus recognizes that by the time some of us get enough sense to serve him, we are bringing him what's left. You know, it's, it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. I'll take it. But Lord, because of sin, I don't think too good anymore. I'll take it. Lord, because of sin, I've got AIDS. I'll take it. Lord, because of sin, now my liver is ruined by liquor. I'll take it. I'll take it. Lord, because of lying, Nobody trusts me anymore. That's all right, Henry. Bring your lying self to me. Bring what little bit of integrity you got left. I'll take it. Thank you, Jesus. Broken and hobbled and crippled and discouraged and demented and distorted and contorted and worn out and twisted. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. And people that some of us would throw away, Jesus takes. People that we would walk by, Jesus takes. People that we know so much about, we can never believe they can be good. Jesus takes. Jesus takes. Give me what's left, Henry. And that's why it's the work of Satan. Listen to me in the balcony. It's, why it's, the, it's the work of Satan to keep your sins before you so that you always think you're unacceptable. Jesus says, and lady, give me what you got. I'll take it. When her son left to go to the war, she knew it would be a rough experience. Because of the intensity of the battle, She didn't hear from him. She wrote letters, as the military instructed, hoping they would get through. Very exasperating. My wife and I went through that with the Gulf War, with our son. Never know whether the soldier's going to get the mail or not. But you're right anyhow. Figuring that if he ever gets it, at least it might encourage his heart. She heard nothing. As the soldiers began to come home, this mother surely knew now she'd hear from her son. She kept waiting. And finally, one evening, to her delight, the phone rang, and on the other end of the line was the voice of her precious son. Mama? Oh, yes. I've been wondering. I... I thought I would hear something. Did you ever get any of my mail? Yes, Mom, I got some of it. I guess you didn't have time to write. It was pretty busy, Mom. Please forgive me. I understand. Just It's such a joy to hear your voice, to know you're all right. Mom, I want to come home. Why you say something like that? Of course. Of course you want to come home. Where else would you go? When you will arrive, I need to discuss something with you, Mom. See, I've got this friend. Yes? Well, I... I want to bring him with me. Well, it's okay. He has no other place to go, Mom. He, he, he can't make it on his own. Was he injured? Yes, Mom. Severely. Oh, my. Well, son, you know our place is small, and... I know, Mom, but... He won't be any trouble. Well, how bad is he injured? Well, Mom, he, he lost an eye in the war. Oh, well, son, that's not too bad. He can see out the other eye? Yes. Well, 
We'll make it. We'll, we'll, we'll find some way to make him comfortable. But, Mom, that's, that's, that's not all. See, in the explosion, Mom, he, he also lost an arm. Oh, well, still, that's not too bad. I mean, son, we'll make do. Just, just tell your friend it's all right. We'll make do. But, Mom, I appreciate this, and I, I knew that would be your spirit, but just, 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 just one more thing, Mom. He, he has no legs. Oh, no legs. Yeah, Mom, I... No legs. Well, son, you know, our place is small. And I work every day. It'll be left on you. Son, I, 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 I'd like to, but... I understand, Mom. I just thought I'd ask. Well, I'll see you soon. I'll be in touch, Mom. Next morning, it was a knock on her door. She opened the door to find her neighbor, tears streaming down her face, holding the newspaper. She said, look, I, I, have you seen the newspaper? Well, no, I, I just got up. I overslept. My, my son called me late last night, and I was just so happy. He's coming home. She noticed her neighbor's face just turned so funny. She said, I think, I think you need to read this. You need to read this. And she looked. Police find wheelchair floating in the river. Person in wheelchair floating face down in river. Article said, must have been a veteran of the war. One eye, one arm, no legs. The identification showed him to be, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, it's my son. It's my son. He was talking about himself. It's my son. She said, the neighbor said, look, 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 try to calm down. See, see, see the rest of the article? Taken to the hospital. Oh, she said, we must run. We must go. We must go. Yes, she said, that's why I'm here. Come on, come on. Calm down. Calm down. We'll get there. Through the streets they rushed, arriving at the hospital. Up the stairs, found the room. There he lay. Her son. One eye. One arm. No legs. She rushed to him and fell on him. Oh, my son, she said. My son, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. His hand moved, caressed his mother's head. Mom, I didn't know how to tell you. She said, son, I'll take it. <laughs>